गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन गुड इवनिंग आई वेलकम यू ऑल अगेन टू नीट अलीट आई होप यू गेज आर डूइंग गुड हैविंग द गुड टाइम सो पी विल जस्ट लेट मी नो इन द चार्ट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इफ आई मॉडल एंड विजिबल टू एवरी वन राइट लेट मी नो इन द चार्ट लेट मी नो इन द चार्ट गिव मी सम ग्रेन सिग्नल फ्रॉम द चार्ट बॉक्स इफ आई मॉडल एंड विजिबल टू एवरी वन हेलो कवि हेलो विवेक हेलो कीर्थना हाई चित्रा हेलो ऐश्वर्या हेलो विजय लक्ष्मी हाई फजान welcome back guys welcome back welcome back just let me know in the chats if i'm audible and visible to everyone hello afshan i'm doing good how are you perfect guys perfect 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 so as you all must be knowing tonight it's going to be the second session from the chapter redox reactions right i hope you would have watched the first session of it in which i discussed the basics of oxidation state i told you the rules to calculate the oxidation state right and people in the tonight session we are going to see some important structures right and after that we'll be directly jumping into the equivalent mass and the concept of n factor as well yeah so before starting the session the ones who are new to the channel let me introduce myself people well my name is wasim bert and i'm your chemistry master teacher writer on this neat elite channel yeah the ones who have not liked the video yet please do like the video share the video with friends and do subscribe to the channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon so that you get the notification of every single session which i'll be taking live on this neat elite channel right so please do like the video share the video with your friends and do subscribe to the channel as well okay i'm doing good ishpreet i'm doing good hello follow me i'm doing good walikum salam ashika perfect guys perfect Okay, so before starting the session, you guys can let me know in the chat if you are super duper excited for the tonight session as well, right? Let me know, let me know in the chat if you people are super duper excited about the session. Abhi Vya, this chapter is going to take some seven sessions to complete. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, guys. All right then without wasting a lot of a time let's get going let's get going to the topic which we are going to cover in the today's tonight's discussion okay all right see you guys in the last session we saw the rules to calculate oxidation state right and what we are going to start with in the tonight session i'm starting with a statement i'm starting with a statement okay and the statement is something important which i want you guys to remember from now onwards the maximum oxidation state <coughs> the maximum oxidation state of an element the maximum oxidation state of an element can never be can never be greater than greater than plus 7 except except osmium in oso4 in oso4 okay a very very important statement guys see in the last session i told you how do we calculate oxidation state right by that simple formula right now we will remember the maximum oxidation state of an element can never be greater than plus 7 there is an exception that is osmium osmium in oso4 it shows the oxidation state of plus 8 over here right do remember this as well right but whenever you will find any element to have the oxidation state greater than plus 7 by using the formula right if you are supposed to calculate the oxidation state of any element by using the formula if that oxidation state comes out to be greater than plus 7 right that means there is something wrong which you are doing there right so what do i have to do at that time i should know the structure of that compound right i should know the structure of that compound for which the oxidation state of an element in it is coming out to be greater than plus 7 right that's why we are going to deal with some particular structures right which you will be remembering from now onwards for example for example if i talk about cro5 If I want you guys to calculate the oxidation state of chromium right here in this compound, so what you'll be firstly doing, you'll be firstly applying the formula to calculate the oxidation state, 
And how do we apply the formula? Let's assume the oxidation state of chromium is X. Oxidation state of oxygen will be minus 2. There are some 5 oxygen atoms. The net charge present on the molecule is 0. So by solving this, you get the value of X as plus 10. You get the value of X as plus 10. But few minutes back only I told you, the maximum oxidation state of an element can never be greater than plus 7. Right? Okay? So this cannot be the oxidation state of chromium. So whenever, by using the formula, oxidation state of an element in a compound comes out to be greater than plus 7, you should know the structure of that compound, then only you can calculate its actual oxidation state, right? Okay, I'm sure you got the concept what I'm telling you right now. So with this, let me take few structures which are really, really very important. The first structure which we are going to deal with is going to be the structure of CrO5, right? Structure of CrO5. How this CrO5 looks like? Let me tell you first of all, this CrO5, it has got the butterfly structure. It has got the butterfly type structure. And at the same time, let me know you, let me tell you, this CrO5, it is deep blue in color. It is deep blue in color. Do remember this thing as well. Now, how it looks like, the structure of CrO5 is going to be Cr, this is double bonded oxygen. One oxygen over here, one oxygen over here, there's a peroxide linkage over here, right? Similarly, there'll be two oxygens attached with a peroxide linkage from here as well, okay? This is the actual structure of your CrO5. This is the actual structure of your CrO5, in which you have got two peroxide linkages. And which are these peroxide linkages? This is the first peroxide linkage, single bond between oxygen and oxygen. This is one more peroxide linkage, single bond between oxygen and oxygen, right? Now, how we are going to calculate the oxidation state of chromium by seeing the structure, understand? First of all, we have got CR double bonded O, CR double bond O. If I ask you among CR and oxygen, which one is more electronegative? You will directly say oxygen is more electronegative. If oxygen is more electronegative, it will attract both these bonded pair of electrons towards itself, due to which this oxygen gets minus 2 and chromium gets plus 2. Similarly, if I talk about this single bond between chromium and oxygen, again this, chromium, this oxygen gets minus 1 and this chromium gets plus 1. If you talk about this bond between chromium and oxygen, oxygen gets minus 1, chromium gets plus 1. If we talk about this bond, oxygen gets minus 1 and chromium gets plus 1. Similarly, if you talk about this bond, this is going to be minus 1 and this is going to be plus 1. If I'll ask you what is the net charge present on this chromium right here? The net charge present on the chromium is going to be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So plus 6 is the actual oxidation state of chromium in CrO5. It is not plus 10, it is actually the plus 6, right? Okay. So you can let me know in the chats if it is clear to everyone. Uh, hurry on, on Vedanta, on the actual Vedanta platform, currently I am teaching GOC. GOC I am teaching on the actual Vedanta platform for class 11 students currently. After GOC, it will take me just uh, one session to finish off the GOC, then I'll start the hydrocarbons. Right? Perfect, guys. Perfect. Yes, Saja, there will be regular classes hereafter. Absolutely. Okay. So this was our first structure, which I want all of you to take a note of. I'm sure you would have taken it a note of. And plus six is the oxidation state of chromium in case of in case of your uh, CrO5, right? Now talking about the structure of H2SO5. H2SO5 is something which we call as Caro's acid. H2SO5 is something which we call as Caro's acid, right? What is the structure of this H2SO5? See guys, this is the structure of H2SO5. For example, this H double bond O, right? This is double bond O, right? This is oxygen, this H2, right? Oxygen is attached to, for example, hydrogen, right? This one more oxygen, this one more oxygen, this is hydrogen. This is the structure of H2SO5 in which you will find one peroxide linkage. This is the peroxide linkage which I'm talking about, right? Now, if I'll ask you what is the oxidation state of sulfur right here, what you'll clearly see, this is sulfur double bonded to oxygen, oxygen being more electronegative, so it is going to show minus two oxygen state, sulfur is going to show plus two oxygen state. Due to this single bond, oxygen again is more electronegative, so minus one, plus one. Due to this single bond, minus one, plus one. Due to this double bond, it's going to be minus two, and this is going to be plus two. So what is the net charge coming on sulfur? Two, two, four, four, five, four, one, five, five plus one is six. So plus six is the oxidation state of sulfur in case of your Caro's acid, right? 
This is one more structure which I want you guys to remember. Yeah? This is one more structure which I want you guys to remember. Perfect? This is the structure of your H2SO5 and commonly we call this H2SO5 as the Garros acid. Right people? Okay. Then we have got one more structure which you guys are going to remember. It is the structure of Marshall's acid. H2S2O8. What is going to be the structure of H2S2O8? People, I hope you are going to try these structures out and remember these structures from now onwards, right? Let me make the structure of Marshall's acid H2S2O8. So how many oxygen I'll put over there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is the structure of your H2S2O8, correct? If I want you guys to calculate the oxidation state of this sulfur, let's exactly look at the structure. This is sulfur, double bond oxygen. Oxygen being more electronegative will carry minus 2. Sulfur at the same time will carry plus 2. Due to this double bond, this will carry minus 2. This will carry plus 2. Due to this single bond, it's going to be minus 1. This is going to be plus 1. Due to this single bond, it's going to be minus 1. This is going to be plus 1. If I'll ask you, what is the net charge present on this sulfur right here? You'll say the net charge present on this sulfur is plus 6. So plus 6 is the oxidation state of this sulfur. Similarly, if you look at this sulfur carefully, guys, this is sulfur double bond to oxygen, right? Oxygen will have minus 2 due to this bond and sulfur at the same time will have plus 2. Due to this double bond, oxygen minus 2, sulfur plus 2. Due to this single bond, minus 1, plus 1. Due to this single bond, minus 1, plus 1. If I'll ask you, what is the net charge present on this sulfur? You'll again say it's going to be plus 6, right? Okay. Right, people? Exactly, you are supposed to remember these structures guys, you are supposed to remember these structures. So oxidation state of this sulfur is plus 6, oxidation state of this sulfur is also plus 6. If I'll ask you, what is going to be the average oxidation state of sulfur, you'll, you'll say clearly average oxidation state of sulfur again is going to be plus 6 only, yeah? Perfect? Perfect guys, moving on to one more. Let's move on to the structure of S4O6 dinegative, right? S4O6 dinegative. How this S4O6 dinegative looks like? See, guys. This is the structure of S4O6 dinegative. And log back, there was a question asked from this S4O6 dinegative as well. I'll tell you the question as well. Okay. Let me make the structure of S4O6 dinegative. This is sulfur. This is sulfur. This is sulfur. This is double bond oxygen, this is double bond oxygen, this is oxygen carrying the negative charge, this is one more oxygen carrying the negative charge. This is the structure of your S4O6 dinegative, right? Now what about the oxidation state of this sulfur guys? Sulfur, double bond oxygen, oxygen being more electronegative, it will attract both the bonded pair of electrons towards itself, so it's going to show minus 2 and sulfur at the same time will show plus 2. This is one more double bond, so minus 2, plus 2, right? There's a single bond, minus 1 and this is going to be plus 1. There's, there's a single bond between sulfur and sulfur, right? Sulfur on one side, sulfur on the other side. So electron pair is exactly going to be at the center. There'll be no shifting of electron pair towards this sulfur or towards this sulfur because on both the sides you've got sulfur. Similarly, on both the sides you've got sulfur right here, nothing. On both the sulf sides you've got sulfur, nothing. So oxidation state of this sulfur is zero. This sulfur is also zero, right? Because on both the sides of these sulfurs, you've got another two sulfur atoms, right? If you look at this as double bond O, oxygen being more electronegative, so it's going to show minus 2, this will show plus 2. This is again going to be minus 2, this is going to be plus 2. This is going to be minus 1 and this is going to be plus 1. Now people, calculate the net charge on this sulfur. Net charge present on this sulfur is plus 5. Charge present on this sulfur is 0. Charge present on this sulfur is 0. Charge present on this sulfur is going to be plus 5, right? So this is the oxidation state of this particular sulfur, oxidation state of this particular sulfur, oxidation state of this one, and oxidation state of this particular sulfur. Okay. If I'll ask you to calculate the average oxidation state of all the, I mean, average of oxidation state of sulfur, you'll clearly say average oxidation state of sulfur is going to be equal. Total charge present on sulfur atoms, which is going to be plus 5, plus 0, plus 0, plus 5, right? Okay. The sum of the charges present on all these sulfur atoms divided by total number of sulfur atoms and the value finally comes out to be plus 2.5. So plus 2.5 is going to be the average oxidation state of sulfur in case of S4O6 dinegative, right? Yes, I'm sure it's clear to everyone. Long back, long back, there was a question asked from this. Long back, there was a question asked. I'm writing the question. Uh, the correct set of 
the correct set of oxidation states of sulfur in Na2S4O6. The options were given as plus 5, plus 5, 0, 0. Option B was given as plus 5, 0, 0, plus 5. Option C was given as 0, 0, plus 5, plus 5. And option D is going to be none of the above. So what is going to be the correct answer of this question? What is going to be the correct answer of this question? What is going to be the correct answer of this question? It's absolutely going to be option B, right? Because few minutes back only I showed you the structure of your S4O6 diligator in which the oxidation state of first sulfur was plus 5, second was 0, third was 0 and fourth one was also plus 5, right? So option B is absolutely going to be the correct answer of this one. This was, this was asked long back in your J means sometimes, right? Okay. So after talking about S4O6 diligator, let's move on and let's see the structure of a bleaching powder CaOCl2, right? If you look at the structure of CaOCl2, this is calcium, this oxygen attached with chlorine and this one chlorine attached with the calcium directly, okay? Now people, if you look at this particular bond between oxygen and chlorine, oxygen is more like to negative, so it is going to have minus one, chlorine is going to have plus one. About this bond, calcium and oxygen, oxygen being more like to negative, again minus one, this is going to be plus one. If you talk about this bond, calcium, chlorine, chlorine is going to have minus one, calcium is going to have plus one, right? Okay, so what is the net charge present on this calcium right here? You'll say plus 2. So plus 2 is the oxidation state of calcium right here. What is the net charge present on this oxygen? You'll clearly say it's minus 2. So minus 2 is the oxidation state of this oxygen. And similarly, plus 1 is the oxidation state of this chlorine. And minus 1 is the oxidation state of this chlorine, right? So one of the chlorine has got the oxidation state of plus 1. And one of the chlorine uh, is having the oxidation state of minus 1. So if I'll ask you in this compound, in this bleaching powder, what is the average oxidation state of chlorine? You'll clearly say average oxidation state. Average oxidation state of chlorine in bleaching powder is going to be zero because you have got two chlorine atoms, one carrying plus one charge, another one carrying minus one charge, right? Let me know in the charts if every single thing is clear till here, right? Perfect guys, wonderful. Let's move on to a few more structures then. Uh, this is the next structure, BASC and hold twice. What is going to be the structure of BASC and hold twice? I want you guys to remember this one as well. This is BA, this is S, this is C, this is triple bond N. This is S, this is C, this is triple bond N. This is the structure of your BASC and hold twice, right? Now we will have a look carefully. If I talk about this triple bond between carbon and nitrogen, Nitrogen is more electron negative, so it is going to attract all these three bonded pair of electrons towards itself due to which it carries minus three, carbon carries plus three, right? Similarly, if I talk about this single bond between carbon and sulfur, sulfur being more electron negative, so this is going to have minus one, this will have plus one. If I talk about this single bond between barium and sulfur, sulfur is more electron negative, so minus one, plus one. If you talk about this single bond, it's going to be minus one, this is going to be plus one. If you talk about this single bond, it's going to be minus one, this is going to be plus one. If you talk about this triple bond, it's going to be minus three, this one is going to be plus three. So net charge present on nitrogen right here is going to be minus three. Net charge on nitrogen right here is going to be minus three. Net charge on carbon, if you can calculate, it's going to be plus four. Net charge on this carbon, it's again going to be plus four. Similarly, net charge on this sulfur, it's going to be minus two. Net charge on this sulfur, it's again going to be minus two. And similarly, net charge present on this barium right here is going to be plus two. So, so you can say plus two is the oxidation state of barium, minus two is the oxidation state of sulfur, plus four is the oxidation state of carbon, and minus three is the oxidation state of nitrogen in case of BASC and hold two eyes, right? I'm sure every single thing is clear to everyone. Oxygen is more electronegative than chlorine. Yes, Robinson, oxygen is more electronegative than chlorine, absolutely. Perfect. And the ones who are not like the video, please do like the video, share the video with your friends and do subscribe to the channel as well, okay? Perfect. I'm sure everything is clear till here, right? Let's model the structure of H2SO4. This is something which everyone would be knowing, right? Structure of H2SO4, correct? I'm making it structure, this H double bond O, right? This is double bond O, oxygen attached with hydrogen, oxygen attached with hydrogen. This is the structure of your H2SO4. And if you look at the structure, from the structure you can calculate the oxidation state of sulfur. 
This is double bonded oxygen. Oxygen being more electronegative will attract both the bonded pair of electrons towards itself due to which oxygen will carry minus two charge, sulfur will carry plus two charge. Due to this double bond, oxygen being more electronegative, so it's going to be minus two, this one is going to be plus two. This single bond, oxygen will have minus one, sulfur will have plus one. This single bond, it's going to be minus one, this is going to be plus one. So what is the net charge present on this sulfur? Plus six, so plus six is the oxidation state of sulfur in case of your H2SO4, right? Perfect. Moving on to few more structures, yeah? Moving on to few more structures, have a look. Let's move on and let's talk about the structure of H3PO2, H3PO3, H3PO4 and H3PO5. Let's make their structures respectively. See guys, we are going to make the structure of H3PO2, H3PO3, H3PO4, H3PO5. Everywhere, everywhere I'll be doing one thing in common, I'll be putting P double bond O in every structure now. It's going to be P double bond O in H3PO2, there'll be P double bond O in H3PO3, there'll be P double bond O in H3PO4, there'll be P double bond O in H3PO5 as well, yeah? Okay, now guys see, H3PO2, right? H3PO2, H3PO2, this is the structure of your H3PO2. This is the structure of your H3PO2. Now talking about H3PO3, this is the structure of H3PO3. This is the structure of H3PO3, right? Similarly, what about the structure of H3PO4? This is the structure of H3PO4. This is the structure of H3PO4. What about the structure of H3PO5? Just have a look. This is the structure of H3PO5, right? Well, if you remember these structures, you can easily calculate the oxidation state of phosphorus in every one of these, right? Easily you can do it, easily you can do it. Now people understand. If I look at this phosphorus, this phosphorus is attached with oxygen by means of a double bond, right? Oxygen being more electronegative than phosphorus, so oxygen will have minus two charge, phosphorus will have plus two charge. About this phosphorus and oxygen, oxygen will have minus one, phosphorus will have plus one, plus one. Phosphorus and hydrogen. Phosphorus being more electronegative, so phosphorus will have minus one, hydrogen will have plus one. Again, phosphorus and hydrogen. Phosphorus is more electronegative, minus one and plus one. What is the net charge present on this phosphorus right here? It's going to be plus one. So plus one is the oxidation state of phosphorus in this compound, right? Okay. Now we will similarly. If you look at the structure of your H3PO3, Look at this double bond first, P double bond O. Oxygen being more electronegative, so it's going to show minus two. Phosphorus at the same time will show plus two. If you talk about this single bond between phosphorus and oxygen, oxygen being more electronegative, it's going to be minus one. This will show plus one. If you look at this single bond between phosphorus and oxygen, it's going to be minus one, this is going to be plus one. Talk about this single bond. It's again going to be, uh, it's going to be, phosphorus is more electronegative than hydrogen, so phosphorus will have minus one, hydrogen will have plus one. Now look at the net charge present on this. Plus two, plus one, plus three, plus four, plus four minus one is plus three. So plus three is the oxidation state of phosphorus in case of your H3PO3, right? Similarly, if you look at the structure of your H3PO4, how do I calculate the oxidation state of phosphorus in case of H3PO4, understand? First of all, this is P double bond oxygen, right? Oxygen being more electronegative, so it is going to carry minus two. Phosphorus at the same time will carry plus two. If you look at this single bond between phosphorus and oxygen, oxygen being more electronegative, so it's going to have minus one, this one will have plus one. Single bond, minus one, plus one. This single bond, minus one, plus one. So what is the net charge present on this phosphorus? Net charge present on this phosphorus is plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five. So plus five is the oxidation state of phosphorus in case of H3PO4. And similarly, when you calculate the oxidation state of phosphorus right here, again, it's going to come as plus five only, right? So I want you guys to remember this, these structures, right? I want you guys to remember these structures and at the same time, after remembering their structures, you can calculate their oxidation states as well. I'm sure every single thing is clear till here, right? Ashika, you just need to remember one thing. Fluorine is more electronegative than oxygen. Oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. This is something which you must be remembering and at the same time, on moving from left to right, on moving from left to right in the periodic table, electronegativity increases. 
on moving from top to bottom in the period table, electronegativity decreases. Just remember these two things, right? Do remember this order and at the same time do remember this order as well. Generally, on moving from left to right, electronegativity increases. On moving from top to bottom, electronegativity decreases generally. Just remember these two steps, you're done, right? Yes, Dinesh, absolutely. You are going to love it. I'm telling you. Okay. So these were the structures of your H3PO2, H3PO3 and H3PO4 and H3PO5 respectively. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. One last structure which you guys are going to remember. K3CRO8. What is going to be the K3CRO8 structure? What is going to be the oxidation state of chromium in this compound? Let's try to make a structure first. This is chromium. This oxygen, one more oxygen, over here a peroxide linkage. This oxygen, 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 one more oxygen, one more oxygen, one more oxygen. Potassium attached with it, potassium attached with it, and this potassium attached with it, right? This is the structure of your K3CrO8, right? K3CrO8. Okay, if you look at this single bond between chromium and oxygen, oxygen being more electronegative will have minus one charge, chromium will have plus one. This oxygen being more electronegative will have minus one, chromium will have plus one. This oxygen will have minus one, chromium plus one. Again, minus one, plus one. Again, minus one, plus one. So what is the net charge present on this chromium? It's coming out to be plus five. So plus five is going to be the oxidation state of chromium in case of your K3CrO8, right? Well, if you look at all the other elements as well, see, there's a peroxide linkage. This is a peroxide linkage. This is a peroxide linkage. And this peroxide linkage, see, this peroxide linkage, it is not going to contribute towards any of the charge present on either this oxygen or this oxygen, right? As we see, the peroxide linkage is neither going to contribute towards the charge on this oxygen or on this one, right? Similarly, this peroxide link linkage is not going to contribute towards any of the charge present on either of the two oxygen atoms. But you have got potassium right here. Potassium belongs to group first element, right? Potassium is attached to oxygen. Definitely oxygen is more electronegative than potassium. So oxygen will have minus one due to this and potassium will have plus one. Again, minus one, plus one. Again, minus one, plus one. So people, if I'll ask you, how many peroxide linkages are there? How many peroxide linkages are there in K3CrO8? You can count it. How many peroxide linkages? This is the first peroxide linkage, second peroxide linkage, third one, fourth one. So there are four peroxide linkages in case of K3CrO8, right? If I'll ask you how many oxygen atoms are there, which carry minus two charge. There is no oxygen atom in case of your K3CrO8 which carries minus two charge. All the oxygen, all the eight oxygen atoms in case of your K3CrO8, they carry what? They carry minus one charge, right? Okay. HK is asking, sir, what is the peroxide linkage? Well, in the last session, we have discussed about the peroxide linkage. Whenever you see oxygen attached with one more oxygen by means of a single bond, this linkage is what we call as peroxide linkage. This linkage is what we call as peroxide linkage. And generally, generally is the term which I'm using. And generally, whenever you see oxygen making the peroxide linkage, you'll be finding oxygen with the oxidation state of minus one generally, okay? I'm sure it's clear to everyone, yeah? Perfect, absolutely. So how you are going to remember these structures? So people, just try these structures out for two, three, two, three, four times. Do try these structures for two, three, four times. You are definitely going to memorize this. As the way I have done it, right? I remember all these structures now. Okay, in the similar way you guys will be remembering. Once you try them for two, three times, that's all, yeah? Okay, perfect. All right, let's move on to something really basics, which is what we call as oxidation and reduction, right? Okay, how do we define oxidation? How do we define reduction? This is something which you all must have studied in your class 10th as well. Still, I'm just doing the quick recap of it. Then I'll move on to the actual stuff which I have to deal with in the night session. Oxidation is basically defined as the loss of electrons. Reduction is defined as the gain of electrons, right? There are many ways by means of which you can define the oxidation, okay? Oxidation in terms of electron exchange. Loss of electrons is called as oxidation. The process which involves the gain of electron, we say that process undergoes reduction. Loss of electrons, oxidation, gain of electrons, reduction, right? First, first thing. Removal of hydrogen is also called as oxidation. Addition of hydrogen is reduction. Addition of oxygen, oxidation. Removal of oxygen, reduction. 
addition of more electronegative element oxidation removal of more electronegative element that is the reduction these are the four ways by means of which we can define the oxidation and reduction but among all these i want you guys to remember only one thing i want you guys to remember only one thing no need to remember the rest of the things rest of the things it these comes in your board's examination right i want you guys to remember these two things loss of electrons is basically oxidation gain of electrons is basically reduction this is something which i want you guys to remember again i'm saying loss of electrons is called as oxidation gain of electrons is called as reduction right these are the two important definitions of your oxidation and reduction in terms of electron exchange which you guys will be remembering so that there won't be any issue while studying the n factor over here yeah okay so you can let me know in the charts if every single thing is clear till here let me know fast let me know fast in the charts yeah okay perfect guys perfect now have a look certain examples i'm taking certain examples i'm taking which are going to make your definitions clear see guys magnesium getting converting into mg dipost and losing two electrons so this process it involves the loss of electrons and any process which involves the loss of electrons is called as oxidation process so this process is basically the oxidation right over here h2o getting converted into o2 h2o getting converted into o2 and it gives away h2 gas so what is happening is the removal of hydrogen happening in this process absolutely in this process the removal of hydrogen is happening basically you are taking hydrogen out from this water you are taking hydrogen out from this water removal of hydrogen is also called as oxidation right similarly addition of more electronegative element like oxygen addition of more electronegative element like oxygen right or you can say addition of oxygen directly addition of oxygen is also called as oxidation see you are providing oxygen to this calcium right okay so addition of oxygen is happening and addition of oxygen is also called as oxidation similarly addition of more electronegative element this chlorine is the more electronegative element you are adding this chlorine to carbon right you are adding this chlorine to carbon so addition of more electronegative element also is what we call as also is what we call as oxidation right there is one thing in common there is one thing in common in all the reactions guys you have to notice that thing right you have to notice that thing what is that thing which you guys are going to notice see guys is there any charge present on this magnesium over here there is no charge present on this magnesium over here so i'll say its oxidation state is zero in this case there is a charge plus 2 present on this magnesium right here so i'll say its oxidation state is plus 2 right okay from mg to mg di positive is the oxidation state of magnesium increasing or decreasing oxidation state of magnesium is increasing right see what is common in everything guys see what is common in everything understand this oxygen it has got the oxidation state of minus 2 over here if you will calculate it right there is no charge on this oxygen this oxygen is present in its standard state the oxidation state of it is going to be zero minus 2 to zero increase in oxygen state right minus 2 to zero increase in oxygen state similarly calcium is showing calcium does not have any charge over here its oxidation state is zero right here calcium shows plus 2 oxygen state so its oxidation state is also increasing right over here carbon it does not have any charge so its oxygen state is zero right here carbon is attached to four chlorine atoms so it will show plus 4 oxygen state when you will calculate it again it's increasing right can i say all these examples are the examples of oxidation right can i say in oxidation the oxidation number increases right increase in the oxidation state of an element is also called as oxidation right see 0 to plus 2 increase in oxygen state magnesium is undergoing increase in the oxidation state and remember increase in the oxidation state is what we call as oxidation so i'll say this magnesium over here undergoes oxidation i'll say this calcium over here from 0 to plus 2 it undergoes oxidation i'll say this carbon over here it undergoes oxidation i'll say this water it undergoes oxidation over here right right people i'm sure it's clear to everyone yeah so in short what i want you guys to remember increase in the oxidation state of an element right as you can see over here in oxidation the oxidation state of an element increases and similarly in reduction the oxidation state of an element decreases right that's something which i want you guys to remember that's all okay where can we get the pdf pdf you are going to get in the telegram group in the telegram group you guys will be getting the pdf right yes chitra at 10:30 i'll come on vedantu je english channel in which i have to i'll be delivering the same lecture which i which i'm delivering tonight here on neatly channel right it's going to be the same lecture there also 
uh, motivation to create something new is asking sir these structures will not be coming in boards these structures can come in boards not all like one of them two of them right it they have got the probability to cover your boards examination as well okay samsung is asking about the subscription so let me show you exactly how to get enrolled through on the actual Vedanta platform if you want to get trained by us on the actual Vedanta platform how to subscribe how to get the pro subscription this is the video which you guys are currently watching right this is the video which you guys are currently watching just drag the video a little down click on this show more after clicking on this show more you'll be getting a lot of links over here there is one link subscribe to Vedanta pro subscribe to Vedanta pro click on this link after clicking on this link you'll have to choose your plan if you are going for light you are going for classic or you are going for plus for example i am going for light you can try this plan for a month you can try this plan for a month or you can buy the complete course and this course and all these three plans in all these three plans you are going to get enrolled in the two year classroom program right you are going to get enrolled in the two year classroom program this is the total fee for two years for the first program which is what we call as the light program the second one which we have classic right this is the total course fee for it and the third one which we have the plus this is the total course fee for two years right and you can pay this much of amount in installments as well it's not necessary to pay this much of amount in one go you can pay it in installments right and if you are new to Vedantu you have no idea how the Vedantu platforms look like do one thing you can take any one of these plans for a month try it for a month click on this after clicking on this you can put your phone number your email id on which you get the otp everything right and we will at the same time if you are using the uh, coupon code as WSPRO or WBPRO while enrollment okay so definitely you'll be getting some additional 10 to 20 percent off as well right and you are going to select the teachers of your choice right Shashank, Shashank is asking sir please take revision session for which chapter I need to take revision yes Javant it's completely fine it's completely fine right Okay, you want me to do this uh, revision of uh, one shot revision of states of matter chapter? Is that? Do you guys want that? Do you guys want that? All right, I'll give it a thought. I'll come up with the one shot session from the chapters well already i think i've taken one shot from the chapter states of mentor for need 2021 students you guys can watch that too by the way you can find that in the community section right in the playlist i'm in uh, teja already i've taken the session on bond parameters also you can you can search it okay you'll get it okay perfect so we will let's move on then Let's move on. Let's talk about oxidizing agents and reducing agent. What are oxidizing and reducing agents all about? This is again one important thing. Yeah. Which batch am I taking? I'm taking a uh, Drishti B batch. Drishti B batch is my long term batch, which I'm taking on the actual on the platform, right? For class 11 students. Okay. Perfect, guys. What is an oxidizing agent all about? How do you define the oxidizing agent? Oxidizing agent is nothing. The substance which oxidizes others and itself undergoes reduction. Okay. What is oxidation in terms of electron exchange? Loss of electrons. What is reduction? Gain of electrons. What is oxidizing agent? Oxidizing agent is the one which oxidizes others, which oxidizes others, but itself undergoes reduction. That means itself, it gains the electron. It makes the other one to lose the electron. Oxidizing agent is the one which oxidizes others, which makes the others to lose the electron and gains the electron by itself right okay for example for example have a look just a second guys okay so before uh, showing you the examples of oxidizing and reducing agents right see this is the definition of oxidizing agent similarly let me give the definition of reducing agent first then i'll show you the examples right what is the reducing agent reducing agent is the one which reduces others but itself undergoes oxidation Reducing agent is the one which reduces others, but itself undergoes oxidation. Oxidizing agent is the one which oxidizes others, but itself undergoes reduction. Reducing agent is the one which reduces others, but itself undergoes oxidation. Right? 
Okay, now have a look on certain examples. You'll get the clear cut idea of what all things I'm talking about. Is there any charge present on magnesium? No, its oxygen state is zero. Is there any charge present on oxygen? No, its oxygen state is zero. Oxygen right here is present in its standard state, NATO state, right? What about the charge present on this magnesium? It's going to be plus two. What is the charge present on this oxygen? It's going to be minus two, right? You can calculate it too. Okay. Is the oxidation state of magnesium increasing or decreasing? Oxidation state of magnesium is increasing. Is the oxidation state of oxygen increasing or decreasing? Oxidation state of oxygen is decreasing. Increase in the oxidation state. Increase in the oxidation state of an element is what we call as oxidation, right? So I'll say magnesium over here is undergoing oxidation. Okay, similarly, decrease in the oxidation state is what we call as reduction. So you can clearly see this oxygen, this oxygen, it undergoes reduction. In short, remember one thing, that substance which undergoes oxidation is what we call as the reducing agent. And that substance which undergoes reduction is what we call as oxidizing agent. Okay, that substance which undergoes oxidation is what we call as reducing, reducing agent. And that substance which undergoes reduction is what we call as oxidizing agent. As simple as that, right? Okay, as simple as that. Hello, Sweety Mishra. Welcome, welcome to the session. All right, guys, this is one more example which I've taken over here. Let's try to identify which one is going to be the oxidizing and the reducing agent. Understand properly what I'm going to say, okay? Let's calculate the oxidation state of iron right here. Let's assume the oxidation state of iron is X. Oxygen will show minus 2, the net charge is 0. So X value will come out to be plus 2. So plus 2 is the oxidation state of iron right here. What about the oxidation state of manganese in this case? Let's go to the value of magnesium. Let's assume the oxidation state of manganese is X. Oxidation state of oxygen is going to be minus 2. There are four oxygen atoms. The net charge present on it is minus 1. The value of X will come out to be plus 7. So plus 7 is basically the oxidation state of manganese over here, right? If I'll ask you to calculate the oxidation state of this iron, you'll clearly say it's plus 3. If I'll ask you to calculate the oxidation state of this manganese, you'll say it's plus 2, right? When you calculate it, right? Now we will have a look properly. Have a look properly. Is the oxidation state of iron increasing or decreasing? Oxidation state of iron, plus 2 to plus 3. It is increasing. Iron is undergoing increase in the oxidation state. And increase in the oxidation state is what we call as oxidation. So I'll say this compound undergoes oxidation. Similarly, Magnesium is changing its oxidation state from plus 7 to plus 2. Decrease in the oxidation state. Decrease in the oxygen state is what we call as reduction, right? So I'll say this MnO4 negative, it's undergoing reduction. And that substance which undergoes oxidation is what we call as reducing agent. And that substance which undergoes reduction is what we call as oxidizing agent. So one among the two is oxidizing agent and one among the two is reducing agent. I'm sure this is again clear to everyone, right? Okay. Few more examples, few more examples, right? Zinc plus Cu dipositive gives Zn dipositive plus Cu, right? Now we will understand. Zinc does not have any charge, so oxygen state is zero. Copper has got the charge of plus two, oxygen state plus two. Zinc has got the charge of plus two, oxygen state plus two. Copper does not have any charge, oxygen state zero. Is the oxidation state of zinc increasing or decreasing? Oxidation state of zinc is increasing. Oxidation state of copper is decreasing, right? If the oxidation state of zinc is increasing from 0 to plus 2, increase in the oxygen state is what we call as oxidation. So I must say zinc undergoes oxidation, right? This Cu dipositive, plus 2 to 0, its oxygen state is decreasing. Decrease in the oxygen state is what we call as reduction. So C, this Cu dipositive undergoes reduction. That substance which undergoes oxidation is what we call as a reducing agent and that substance which undergoes reduction is what we call as oxidizing agent, right? So you identified among the two which one is going to be the oxidizing agent and which one is going to be the reducing agent, right? A very simple and basic thing again, yeah? Perfect. All right, guys, wonderful. So I'm sure every single thing is clear till here. Okay, I think this much is enough for today's session. Let's discuss this equivalent mass in the tomorrow's session, right? Right, guys? Let's discuss this equivalent mass in the tomorrow's session. Perfect. 
let me know in the chats if, if everything is clear to you or if there is any sort of issue in understanding the things you can let me know in the chats i'm looking at your chats only yes yes we'll be doing the p block as well no issues at all perfect guys perfect perfect work so before ending the session let me give you the quick overview of certain important things right just a second okay this is the plan for the need 2023 students you can take any one of these plans right we have as i told you in the beginning also we have got light classic and pro these are the features every single parameter is there right if you really want to enjoy the Vedanta classes, you should take definitely one of these plans, right? You can give it a try for a month, right? You can take these plans for a month and one month plan, one month light plan, you're just getting for this much of amount. One month, one month of classic plan, you're getting for this much of amount. And one month of your plus plan, you're getting for this much of amount, right? People do give it a try. It's going to be highly, highly, highly beneficial for you. The best part is you're going to get the study material everywhere, which is one of the best ac across the country. That's what we call as the Tattva material, right? Tattva material you're going to get in, 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 in all these plans if you're either enrolling for a month or for two years, right? And this, these are, this is the actual fees for the two-year classroom program, right? And no need to pay all this much amount in one go. You can pay it in the installments as well, right? If you're taking the light program, this much is the amount you have to pay. You can pay this it's in the form of EMI. This is the plan valid for two years, right? Live interactive online classes, test series analysis, right? Notes and best part is study material, doubt solving during the app. And if you are new to Vedantu, you can try it out for a month. Then you can go for this two-year classroom program, right? Similarly, one additional feature in the classic, that is the doubt solving on mobile app, right? You'll be getting one mobile app in which you'll be putting in some of the doubts, whatever doubts you'll be having. At the same time, you'll be getting your answers cleared, right? You'll, you'll, you'll get your doubts cleared. This is the course fee for two years, right? No need to pay this much of a month in one go. Again, I'm telling you, you can give it a try for a month, right? This much is the fee you have to pay for a month, right? Okay, give it a try for a month. And if you are liking it, if you think you are getting benefited, then go for the two-year classroom program. And similarly, we have got the plus program over here, right? There is one additional feature in it over here. That is the personalized mentor. You get the personal mentor in all the three subjects, physics, chemistry, as well as biology in this plan, right? This is again a two-year classroom program wherein this much is the total fee, right? No need to pay this much of a moment in one go. Pay it in the form of installments, monthly EMIs. Or if you are again new to Vedanta, I'm saying, yeah, do give it a try for a month, right? And get enrolled and this is the coupon code which you guys will be using by means of this coupon code you can get me as your master teacher of chemistry in your act in your long-term programs in your actual vedantu programs in your actual actual vedantu classes right and after using this coupon code you'll be getting some additional 10 to 20 percent off as well yeah perfect so we will this was all from my side in the tonight session, right? There is one Telegram link in the description box. Do click on this link as well. Get added to the Telegram group and stay updated about the classes. And the ones who have not liked the video yet, the ones who have not liked the video, please do like the video, share the video with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to the channel as well, right? So we will, with this, I'll take a leave. I'll see you guys tomorrow at the same time. Tomorrow we'll start with something called as equivalent mass and the calculation of n factors, right? I'm sure every single thing will be clear to us. Till here, okay? Right? I'm sure every single thing will be clear. Okay, one homework I'm giving you. One homework I'm giving you right here only. For example, I'm writing a reaction. The reaction is K2Cr2O7. K2Cr2O7. Uh, plus Fe di positive. Plus H positive. It gives Cr tri positive plus Fe tri positive plus H2. You need to tell me which among the two is going to be the oxidizing agent, which among the two is going to be the reducing agent, right? You are going to let me know. You are going to let me know in the comment section which one among the two is oxidizing agent and the reducing agent respectively. And with this, I take a leave over here. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Till then, you guys can take care. Bye-bye. God bless you all and love you all. Surely, KIE. Let's see tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. Yes, Amir. Let's meet up tomorrow. Bye-bye.